Uh, Tokyo Treat is a Japanese subscription box, not sponsored. Uh, is a Japanese subscription box that sends you uh, fun Japanese snacks once a month. I've been looking, as uh, many of you probably know, uh, at Japanese subscription boxes for like the last couple of months, really wanting to pull the trigger on some of them. The only thing that pushed me over the cliff for this one is they had a promo going where you got, I think, some extra Kit Kat flavors, which are like the fancy items. And also they've got this, uh, for June, they had a combination, what do you call it? A co-op, not co-op, what do you call it? Partnership with Funimation. Uh, and if you bought the box for this month, you get a month of Funimation for free. And even though I'm not really a anime boy, uh, for some reason that enticed me. Maybe I'll get into anime. I don't know why, since I'm not much of an anime person in general, I don't know what it is about the, the Japanese treats that have always been very enticing to me in general. Maybe it's, I'm a child and it's the colorful, bright packaging. I don't know, but every time I get an ad for them, I, I want to eat them so badly. So I finally pulled the trigger. This may be the only month I do it, but I wanted to try some of them. So this is the June box. We're going to start today's stream cracking it open. We're going to go through the items one at a time. I'm going to test them all. I skipped dinner. This probably isn't going to be great for my skin tomorrow. Speaking of the skincare routine, eating, I think there's 22 snacks, which are mostly just candy. There's 22 snacks plus a drink in here. I have a bad feeling I'm going to hurt after this, but it's okay. I'm going to let you know what all of them taste like and how I like them. You've seen one of those, and if it has squid jerky, throw it away stat. I don't think this one has squid jerky. I think Tokyo Treat typically, most of their treats lean towards like the the sweet side. There's like There were a bunch of different ones. There's like Japan Crate, there's Tokyo Treat, there's bo uh, bo Boksu Box, I think it's called. There, there's a bunch of different ones. Some of them are more savory snacks, some of them are more sweet. I believe Tokyo Treat tends to fall more sweet, which is good for me because I have a horrible sweet tooth. Oh, I did wear my um, I did wear my Avatar The Last Airbender shirt because it's the only thing even resembling an anime that I've seen. But a boy who has never been Japan knows, never been to Japan, knows very little about Japanese culture, has never eaten anything other than like Americanized sushi, but has never eaten snacks from Japan. He's gonna crank into. His first Tokyo treat ever. Probably shouldn't cut towards myself, but here we are. All right, the big reveal. Hopefully my address, which was originally on the back, but I ripped it off. Hopefully it's not right, like printed on the top of this box or anything, or I'm going to delete this video in 0.3 seconds after the stream ends. Let's take a look. I can't, I, I'm blocking my own view. I can't actually see. Our world is yours. Treat yourself. Love it. Post it. Something. Anime? Oh, that just reminded me, ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, anime marathon munchies. Guess what? Guess what's back? Anime is an important part of our culture. You can tell we're actually putting some effort back into the stream. The stream deck is back up and running. It's authentic. You know why? You know why this is authentic? because it reads from right to left. I, I looked at it and I was like, wait, why is the fold on this side? This is the, this is the right side. Why is the, why is the crease, the corner, the edge on this side? Why is it open from this side? Do they read from right to left in Japan? I think that's maybe true. Every box has a theme. This month's theme is anime marathon munchies. Hello from the Tokyo family. Hope you had a good month. We've got some extra Kit Kats we would love to give you. Okay, well, I'm gonna hop. I'm gonna hide that QR code because I would like to get the Kit Kats. <laughs> no offense to all of my lovely subscribers, but I want the Kit Kats. Okay, so this is what I was excited for. So in the in the thing itself, they give you a little uh, a brochure, if you will, a little an index of the different snacks because they're from Japan. So many are printed in Japanese, and I cannot read Japanese. So what they do here, which is very nice, is they give you a picture of the food you're about to ingest, and then they tell you what it is. So basically, we'll go through these one at a time. I'll pull something out of the box, which will sit over yonder. I'll reference our lovely little index in here to figure out what it is and what it's gonna taste like. I will taste it, and I will let you know if it's good or not. You're not gonna say what I was gonna say? Is it something about utter Uncle Pierre's buttercream? Because I could understand that one. Oh, dude, okay. So I'm not gonna lie, I watch a lot of Bok, like, when I got interested in these Japanese treats, I started watching a bunch of 
Japanese treat unboxing and tasting videos. And one thing everybody talks about is that the, the Japanese Kit Kats come in, like, the, just their packaging. It's almost like a, not like a cardboard, but kind of like, like it's like a, it's a paper material. Which is, which is pretty different than what you would expect over here. Everything here is very plasticky. It's got a very nice feel to it. So the reason I bought this month in particular um, is that you get two free extra big bags of Kit Kat for free. So I think these were the two, because let me, let, me, let me check what this month's Kit Kat is. This month's, in this box's Kit Kat, is Kit Kat Maple. So these were the two that I got, and these are actually from previous months. I recognize these because I've been looking at them for many months. Uh, this is a Sakura Cherry Blossom flavor, which is awesome because I really wanted to try this one. A lot of stuff in these boxes are Sakura uh, Cherry Blossom flavor, and I don't know that I would like something that's flowery tasting, but apparently it is. And this one is a uh, green tea matcha uh, Kit Kat, I believe, which is another very popular Kit Kat flavor or just a flavor of a lot of things in Japan. So I guess we'll try these first. Oh, everything's in kilocalories. I don't know what that means. These are not part of the June box, but I will try them anyway. We will start with the um, green tea matcha flavored Kit Kat. Oh, this is adorable. It says good job on the back. If American Kit Kats had motivational phrases on them, I might be in a better mental state. That is a sickly green color, I have to be honest with you. <laughs> I gotta be honest with you, that is, um, that is what some in the business would call baby food green. I think if you were gonna put that on a crayon. Or it kinda looks like the greeny um, dog treats that we used to give Banjo all the time, but that he would try to swallow whole and then throw up instantly. What's matcha? Um, it is, I know this one because I looked it up. Matcha is a paste or a powder, I believe, made of the leaves of the green, green tea plant, if that makes sense. So normally when you would make green tea, you would, you would brew the tea through using the leaves of the green tea plant. This is just the plant itself mushed up. It smells like, um, it smells like white chocolate. I've had the white chocolate Kit Kats before. Those are very good. I'll let you know. Ooh. Ooh. So it tastes like green tea, which I thankfully love drinking, but like, think of what green tea tastes like and then like triple the flavor of that. Triple the amount of concentration of the green tea flavor, which makes sense because this is actually just the powder from the leaves instead of running water through the leaves. So it makes sense that it's a lot more concentrated, but it essentially just tastes like green tea. But then with like a, like a, a vanilla, a twist of vanilla at the end, I would say. One thing I don't like about it is the, um, I don't even know if it's chocolate on the outside, but whatever the, the, the green matcha stuff on the outside, it melts very quickly in your mouth, but then it's kind of, it's kind of grainy, almost like coffee grounds or something like that, which isn't a texture I love in my uh, sweets. I give the matcha ones like a six, not my favorite. It tastes very tea-y, which I used to hate. I used to hate the taste of tea. It's just weird having that flavor in a, in a crunchy thing, you know what I'm saying? Like I'm used to sipping on green tea. It's weird having crunchy green tea. Next I'm gonna try the uh, Sakura Cherry Blossom one, which I've heard in general it tastes, I've never had anything that's cherry blossom flavored, although it's pretty common in Japan. Um, I've heard there, as you would expect, it's a very floral, lightly sweet kind of flavor. This one says, this one says, have a nice day, I think. I can't really read it through the, I can't, can't really read it through the autofocus. Someday we'll get a real camera, by the way. It says, have a break, have a Kit Kat. Okay, I mean, close enough. All right, we'll try the Japanese uh, Cherry Blossom, the Sakura's best character in Danganronpa 1. Don't tell Crotus. Now this is a, is a nice looking Kit Kat. The color on this bad boy, like a light 
did I did like auto focus get turned off or something? Do this. I've seen the YouTubers do this. Okay, you know it says Kit Kat. It's like a lightly pink, lightly peach, uh, almost the same color. Dude, if they had made like a cover up in this color, that might be a match. I have to use the review brush scale. Okay, uh, that then in that case everything's gotta have a point. So I'll give the matcha ones a 6.1 out of 10. Now I will try the, smells the exact same as the other ones. I will try the cherry blossoms. Ooh, mm, that's kind of nice. Ooh, mm, all right, that's good. 6.1 might have been a little high for the last one. These absolutely smashed the last ones into pieces. Tastes more like candy. The, the other problem with the other ones is that they're like, a little sweet, but it didn't taste super candy-y. Granted, I'm used to eating American candy, which is probably just pumped up with extra sugars and sweeteners and stuff. But honestly, this tastes more like uh, something you would find in like a, a, a US uh, chocolate sweet of sorts. It's very, very sweet. There is a, I don't know if I'd even call it flowery, but there's definitely like a, an undernote of of something in there. Go ahead and peep OG, write that down. Under note of something, professional reviewer. It kind of mostly just tastes like a white chocolate Kit Kat though, which is one of my favorite variations of Kit Kat. So I'm very down for it. Uh, I'm gonna give that a 9.2 out of 10. That's a nice 9.2 out of 10. <laughs> Yo, ZD, welcome in. How's it going? 15 months. Thank you so much for the renewed subscription. Appreciate that. Boy, you so skinny. I appreciate that, ZD. Um, we're about to try every single snack inside of this Tokyo treat box. So I don't know if that's going to be true by the end of this. Let's change the palette a little bit. Let's go with something that looks like... This bad boy looks like it's going to be cheesy. Would be my guess. Just based on the coloring. Based on the coloring, this seems like a cheesy kind of boy. There's also a potato dragon up here, and it is produced by Frito-Lay. So I'm assuming this is some sort of like, they feel puffy. So I'm gonna assume this is some sort of uh, spiral potato puff, maybe Cheeto analog of some sort. Look, we can, we can consult the lovely guy and figure out what it is. It is a dragon potato, tasty chili flavor. While watching Dragon Goes House Hunting, give dragon potato a home in your belly. These addictive spicy, spicy, the addictive spicy flavor of these curly chips is cut with mellow cheese and veggies. I'm a huge fan of spicy stuff, so I think I'm probably going to enjoy these. This does put a smile on my face. Give you a little sniff profile. Smell profile slightly of feet. Not in a good way. Kind of reminds me of um, when I went to Germany, I had these paprika chips. Mixed with like if you've ever walked through like a dog pound. You ever you ever walk through like a, a dog pound to visit the puppies? Kind of a little combination of that. It is curly. Hold on, let me find a bigger one. Ooh, dude, I wonder if this is... Oh, I was hoping you could like bugle it and like put it on your finger, but it is a... It's a solid bottom like a pig's tail, but it is also twisty like a pig's tail. Let's give it a go. Mmm, not like Cheetos. Not Cheetos at all. Not even close. I'm dumb. It's not even close to a Cheeto. It is. You know what it looks like? Okay, not that. But you know what else it kind of looks like? That shape. You ever seen the video where they like prove that you can turn a sphere inside out without making any cuts or folds? This looks like 50% of the way through that process. It is basically like a, the taste and texture and like level of crunch. I would equate to like a Pringle. So it's not as like deeply crunchy as like a potato chip or a kettle cooked chip or anything like that. It's potato-y, but it's more reformed potato. Like a Pringle would be in those shapes. It's reformed in this fancy squiggly shape. So it's more of a light crunch and very potato heavy. The seasoning is tremendous. Literally, I could eat this entire bag. Oh, you can see Banjo, look at him. He's using his bed. He was just like laying on the carpet earlier. I don't know when he made the trek over there. I would give one of these to Banjo, but 
I can't read Japanese, and I don't, any one of those lines could say, will kill your dog. It smelled like a dog park. It tasted absolutely tremendous. All right, that is a, dang, I'm, I knew this was gonna be a problem, because I was gonna eat these snacks, and I was gonna love them, and I was gonna be like, why don't they serve these in the United States of America? Because I would love to eat them if I could, but they don't serve them in the United States of America, so I cannot. I mean, like a 9.4. I think, I think that was even better than the, the Sakura Kit Kats, if I do say so myself. Should we try Daddy's Sweet Roll or whatever this was called? <laughs> what was this one called? I think it's like Daddy's Sweet Roll. Something like that. I'll consult the manual in just a second. I'm assuming that's daddy in the bottom left there. It looks really good, dude. It looks like a, I wonder if this is their like little Debbie analog, except he's not little, he's big. That's big, that's big Debbie. What's his name? This is called Uncle Pierre's Buttercream Roll. Do you watch anime with your family? You'll want to catch your favorite show with Uncle Pierre and this fluffy butter, excuse me. We're gonna see how daddy's sweet roll tastes. I promise you I'm gonna like this because there is not a single Little Debbie snack cake that I don't like. I, Nutter Butters, Cosmic Brownies, Cupcakes, those are Hostess. Hostess or Little Debbie, to be honest with you. Oh God, oh no, this looks minkus. <laughs> oh no, <laughs> oh no. I don't know if it got slightly flattened in uh, in package, in, in transit or whatnot, but you know, here's a nice perfectly cylindrical roll you can see the cream on the outside in actuality ends up looking a little more suspect I, w I would say I, I think the shape tends to be a little more suspect in reality I got some questions for Uncle Pierre the scent profile tells me that this is a Twinkie and if it is a Twinkie it tells me that I'm going to love it so we will try it Ooh, oh, that scared me it's so light. I bit into it, expecting some level of, re of resistance. And like, don't get me wrong, a Twinkie is light. Twinkies are light and fluffy, but there's some cakey resistance when you bite through it. I understand how this got to this flattened state. It is as soft as a, a, a cloud. I could, a baby could bite through this with his little gums. It tastes just like a Twinkie. Oh my God, it's so good. Dang it, dude. I, I'm gonna want these all the time. I'm gonna want all this stuff at all of the times and they're not gonna have it. And I don't want a stinky Twinkie because then I can't say I ate Uncle Pierre's butter roll. I wanna eat Uncle Pierre's butter roll only. Uh, yeah, it basically tastes like a Twinkie. I would say the, the cream filling is a little less pronounced as it is in a Twinkie where there's like the big pockets of it. It's more like a light layer throughout, but it's enough to add like a little bit of, little bit of texture difference and a little added s sweetness to it as well. I can't give them all nines, but it's, it's better than the last ones. It's 9.5. It's 9.5 out of 10. Okay, let's try something I might not like. What's, what's something in here I might not like? This looks scary. All right, so we just had Uncle Timmy's meat or roll stick. Now we're gonna have Uncle Tommy's. Uh, whatever these are. So I believe these are like, uh, uh, mochi dumpling type things with, I believe that's a matcha filling, which we already had earlier on the Kit Kats. Oh, it says it right there. Mochi mochi chocolate. Uncle Timmy's what? I don't know. I don't know what I said. I'm sorry. I don't like what they're doing up there with the chopsticks. That's, that's concerning. Oh, the company is called Mochi Mochi Chocolate. It is Sakura flavored mochi. Too busy snacking out and catching up on anime to take in spring? We got you. Fill up on chewy, sweet Sakura mochi with a matcha ganache filling for your spring fix. It's summer now. It's 92 degrees outside. I want to die. Maybe this will bring me back to springtime happiness. It comes in the, uh, it's like one of those boxes you get. You sneak candy in the movie theater. You like shove it in the, the breast pocket of your, your jacket when you're going in. I usually opt for the milk duds when I go to a movie theater because they take so long to eat that they'll last me throughout the movie. I found if I get something like Reese's Pieces, I down them all before the credits are done. Literally can't eat milk duds that fast, so I found I find that I pace myself a little more. Okay, this is concerning. 
So this is just me being uncultured. What is this? So they come in these individual packages. There's a stick. Perhaps I'm supposed to stab each mochi with the stick and then eat it off the stick like they do in the anime. And then I go, oh, perhaps that's how I'm supposed to eat these. It also comes with some sort of, um, uh, is this like the silica gel tab things in the back to keep it dry? I'm supposed to freeze it? It didn't tell me to freeze it. It's not frozen. I do know that they make like mochi ice cream, but maybe mochi is also... Anyone who's more cultured than I am, is mochi also done in a in a non-frozen form as well? Because if not, I'll go, uh, I'll go freeze this. See, and this is an issue where the ability to speak Japanese would be clutch. Because I see this, and I go, am I supposed, is this icing? Am I supposed to sprinkle it on? Or am I supposed to, uh, is it poison? Don't eat this. I literally have no idea. It's icing? I feel like I'm being lied to. Okay, so here's the, the things. Oh, there's, they're supple. So they gave me this sharp toothpick that I assume I need to impale. Watch out. Dude, it's actually, okay. Even though I chose to impale it, Oh, it's kind of sticky. I bet that's why they, uh, I bet that's why they give it to you. It's literally like so, the, the texture, the squishiness and both the like surface texture, I can only describe as like in your lobe, which is probably going to make this very appetizing for me now. I guess I should bite half of it to get a good cross section first. So this is like Sakura rice stuff on the outside and then a, and a matcha filling. Oh, it's so soft. Why is everything they make so soft? Hmm. Hmm. This is, um, I enjoy the matcha flavor and I know that the plant is green, but I gotta say, when you start putting this in stuff like this, you really end up with some unsavory, um, <laughs> it looks like uh, wasabi coming out of an open wound. Like, you, you end up with some unfortunate color combinations here. Thankfully, it doesn't taste like wasabi. Coming out of an open wound, it actually tastes pretty good. It's the least sweet, for sure, of all of the sweet snacks that I've tried so far. I'd probably only give this one like a 4.5 out of 10, though. I don't think, I'm not, let's be honest, I'm not sneaking this into the movie theater, unfortunately. That's not a movie theater snack for me, which is how I've chosen because it comes in a rectangular box. That's how I'm gonna uh, judge it apparently. Okay, this looks like baby food in the nicest way possible. <laughs> Again, I'm telling you, it may just be the colorful packaging that really makes me wanna try Japanese snacks. Look at how many colors are on this thing. They've got like knockoff Caillou on here as well. I don't know what this is. I can tell you it's light and fluffy. It reminds me of a lot of my friends have started reproducing, which is a weird way to say that they had kids. And they feed them these little baby Gerber puffs sometimes. The inside and the packaging makes me think these are Gerber puffs. Oh, this one could be a problem. Uh, okay, so the, the brand is called Baby Kaki. That's scary. And these are mochi seaweed salt flavor. We are rounding off our anime snack fest with something super crunchy. Seaweed salt flavored crackers. Okay. They're called Baby Kaki is the name of the, is the name of the company <laughs> or of this brand of snacks. So they're seaweed crackers, which I could have guessed. They've got probably the pictures of the crackers right here with little green spectacles. I'm gonna be honest, I love sushi. I love consuming sushi. I can put up with the sushi when there's a delicious bite of spicy tuna or crab, cucumber, and cream cheese accompanying it. Seaweed by itself, I don't think is a lovely flavor. I'm not the biggest fan of it. I have had before pure seaweed chips, just like it's just dried seaweed and I had to th nearly throw up because it was such a concentrated fishy taste. This is only a seaweed flavored cracker though. So maybe it won't be as concentrated because otherwise I'm absolutely gonna hate this. Oh God, oh no. They do kind of look like the Gerber puffs. I think the Gerber puffs come in uh, 
like little uh, cylind cylindrical shapes. These are more like magic carpet ride shapes or like uh, cinnamon toast crunch shapes. Little, it looks like a packing peanut. That's what it looks like. And it's fluffy like a packing peanut. Except this one apparently tastes like seaweed. It's so, it's so fishy, dude. All right, let's give it a go. Ooh, mm -mm. No, that's very good. It's fishy, but it's not concentrated pure seaweed chip. Fishy. It tastes like a Cheeto, kind of, kind of like a Cheeto puff consistency, but with like a light fishiness to it. So almost, it's just like a fish flavored cracker. They called it seaweed salt flavor. The salt is way more prominent um, than the seaweed. So I'm very into this. Now, should you give it to babies? Like it says on the top, should you give it to baby cocky right here? I don't know if they would enjoy it very much. Stop talking about the baby like, <laughs> it's his name. I'm just saying his name. 7.2, not the greatest. Probably wouldn't do him a ton. Probably wouldn't eat him a ton, but not the worst. 7.2. Okay, we should do the drink. Oh no. Yeti, if you're worried about the FBI, just wait till they see me getting a taste of this colored drink. That's gonna be a problem. This, this is concerning. She seems to be enjoying it. Probably should have put this in the fridge um, to enjoy it cold. I'm gonna guess it is grape ranch soda. That's probably not, that's a USA thing, I'm pretty sure only. Okay, what flavor? It is Fanta Yogurt Rush. Watching cells at work is thirsty work. Huh? Oh, cells at work is an anime, I'm assuming. Watching cells at work is thirsty work. Good thing you've got Fanta Yogurt Rush. The Muscat, which is a kind of grape, yogurt flavored soda combines fizzy goodness with probiotics that are good for your cells. All right, so my... My, that's probably good, honestly. They give you all this other, I don't want to call it junk food, but food that's not good for you. They include a little probiotic to help flush out the system. Thank, keep you regular. I do appreciate that. Before you go, you want to have a couple game suggestions you put on Discord? No, go for it. I, I have... What the... F Holy... Okay, well, they pressurize their drinks a little different than we do over here in the States. What in the world? It didn't explode, but the... The shock, there was a shock wave that came out from the seal when it crossed a certain point. I thought I lost a finger just now. In the US, when you open like a soda pop, it'll reach a certain point where it kind of just like fizzes a little bit. This was like a CO2 canister being released. Holy cow. All right, well, it's definitely carbonated, which is good news. Oh, it smells like lotion. Oh, this is gonna taste like lotion for sure. I think I'm gonna have a problem with this one. One of the problems I have with anything, people love like cucumber melon flavored stuff. Like I see a lot, maybe it's like a, uh, not a zoomer, like a hipster kind of flavor for sure. But I see a lot of beverages and other things that are cucumber melon flavored. And growing up, my mom used, when I was like seven, eight years old, my mom used to always buy us this cucumber melon flavored soap. Did you say flavored, scented, whatever you call it. It was this cucumber melon soap that I used for like three years of my life. And so the scent of cucumber melon is just so intrinsically tied into my brain as a cleaning hygiene product that whenever I have tasted anything cucumber melon flavored, my brain tells me I'm like drinking bleach. So I, this initial whiff smells like lotion. So I'm very worried my brain is going to have a similar you are drinking a cleaning product kind of reaction. It's not cold, by the way. Perhaps I should have put it on ice or something, but we'll give it a room tempy check. It's still fizzy. There's definitely some lotion-esque qualities in here, that's for sure. It's good, though. I, I My brain's not, like, telling me to regurgitate it or anything. It's good. I would say grape is definitely the predominant flavor in it. It kind of reminds me of, like, a sparkling white grape juice which I used to drink on like New Year's Eve all the time before uh, I gave into the, the, the mortal sin of alcohol. It mostly tastes like that, but with like a little milkiness. I don't know if that's a great way to describe it, but it's yogurt, so it probably is a good way to, it's got like a little bit of milkiness. It is creamy, like I, I, I'm not, I, I'm not gonna dip and dive over that question. Texture wise, and as you can probably see by the residue, 
that it's leaving on the side that like a normal soda, which is a little waterier, does not. Normal soda, you drink it, all the stuff goes back down to the bottom. This is leaving like a, a tinted residue all over the side of the bottle. It's like 10% thicker than the average soda is what I would say. I like this. I will be drinking this entire thing. I'm gonna give it like a, like eight point, eight point three. 8.3 seems pretty fair, I would say. Look at this little guy. <laughs> Look at this, like a little mini stick of butter. They showed the picture in here and I thought I was getting like a uh, mozzarella cheese stick. But then you get it and it's just like a little, little mini stick of butter. You ever seen those? Uh, I get them on TikTok all the time. And now I want to buy them because what's wrong with me? They're little mini brand figurines of like real life brand items like butter or prairie farms milk or famous amos cookies or name whatever it is but like spy kids shrunken down versions like miniature versions and then you get them in these like big they're like oranges and you crack open the orange peels and each of the orange peels is a little mini brand figurine and then they also of course i mean they gotta be making bank they sell like mini kitchens and countertops where you can set all the stuff up I don't know why I want them so badly, uh, but they always look very satisfying on TikTok. This reminds me of one of the little butters that I've seen, <laughs> little country crock on there that I've seen before. I'm excited. So this is just cheese, right? You didn't think we would forget our cheese fans, did you? This rich, indulgent, mini Japanese cheese snack is the perfect partner to a romance anime. I don't know if I'll be watching any anime, but I can promise you that if I did, it's probably not gonna be a romance anime. Now what, ooh, stinky cheese. What flavor cheese? I don't know, it just said it's a Japanese cheese. I'm not a big cheese guy by itself. I love cheese on stuff. I've never been a big uh, cheese just for cheese sake though. Like I'm not a just take a bite out of a block of cheese or I know people that'll just do uh, handfuls of shredded cheese straight in their gobs. Not for me. Ooh. Ooh, that's cheesy. Nothing more romantic than a single bite of cheddar. We're well, supposed to share it. Lady in the Tramp style. Oh, that's gonna be a no for me, Chief. The only cheese I can eat by itself is mozzarella, like a, like a string cheese, because it's got such a weak flavor profile. Like it's not, it's not sharp or pungent or really cheesy at all. Anything other than that is always like too, too biting for me. This is one of those for sure. It's got a little kick by itself. It's a little too much cheese flavor for me. I'm gonna have to wash that one out, unfortunately. I'm gonna give it like a 3.2. Now granted, I'm just not a cheesy boy. So that one's just not for me. For a cheese connoisseur, and maybe I should have saved the other half for Maria instead of eating both halves of something I didn't really enjoy. These are mini tennis balls. Look how accurate they are. They have like the fuzz and everything on them. What is this? This is gonna be like a piece of gum. If this is gum, I'll probably save it for the end. I can't believe how accurate the mini tennis balls look though. Okay, it's gum. I'm gonna save the gum for the end. We're going with the little guys next. I don't, I don't, th this seems like a good palate cleanser after the cheese. This little um, Calvin and Hobbes knockoff is just hugging this honeydew. So I'm assuming it's gonna be like a little honeydew. Is that a honeydew? I've seen that fruit before, or at least I've seen its berry analog in a Pokemon game. Oh, this is a Beko. Beko! This is a Beko Ramun candy. For all of fans of cute anime and snacks, fruity a Beko Ramun candy is a super juicy and colorful snack. Enjoy the fizzy texture. Mmm. So these like, they're these little tablets. I don't know what it means by fizzy texture. Maybe it means uh, they used to have this gum in the US. I don't know if they still make it. I certainly haven't seen it in a very long time. I believe it was called like Fizzums gum, F Fizzums? Something like that. There were these little tablets of gum that you would chew. When you chewed it initially, it would do like a fizzy carbonated pop rock sensation in your mouth. And then after you chew it for a while, it just turns into normal bubble gum. I used to freaking down that stuff, dude. If this fizzes in my mouth like the Fizzum's gum used to, it's not the name of it, I'm gonna have to look it up after this. If this fizzes like that, I'm gonna be very excited. It looks like a Smarty. Mmm, mmm. 
That can't be a honeydew. That tastes too good. Is that a kumquat? I think it's a kumquat. No memes. I'm, I think that's a kumquat. 100% sure that's a kumquat. Uh, kumquat uh, is actually orange, so don't listen to me. It's almost like a... Um, if you ever had moon sand or kinetic sand that you could like build stuff with, but then if you like poked it, it kind of just like... It fell flat, like all of the... It, it could hold its shape until it like a uh, force acted upon it and then it dies it's almost like that it's a solid tablet and then you put it on your tongue and it literally just kind of flattens out that's kind of cool I, I don't know how that works from a science perspective but i'm kind of into that pretty good for what it is i'll give it a 7.7 7 out of 10 this thing is terrifying I, <laughs> please don't be the squid thing that neon was talking about oh it's upside down sorry that was upside down. It's actually supposed to, he actually looks like this, which makes me now think it might be a squid. It is General Ikasin. Add some crunch to your anime marathon with this tasty Japanese squid cracker. Perfect for anime lovers who love sailing the high seas with the One Piece crew. Um, <laughs> okay, so I hate the ocean is the thing. I hate all things in the ocean, and the squid is amongst them. If you've ever seen the videos of, like, the giant squid that they've only captured in, like, submarine footage here and there, that thing makes me want to pass away every single time I see it. And here's his chip. Here, here's his squid chip. Is it, Neon, is this what you were warning me not to try? It's the blooper you race in Mario Sunshine. Oh, you're right! He got the gold medal, finally. Oh my god. Oh my god! Oh no! If the seaweed chips smelled a little bit like a fish, this smells like a dang aquarium. It, it's the shape it says it was supposed to be. It looks like a squid. Oh god. <laughs> oh god. Oh no, oh no. I'm gonna put that one back in the packaging. Um, <coughs> oh, holy. Yeah, it's fishy. It's um, it's quite fishy. It's um, texture wise, it's like a pork rind, if you, if you have had pork rinds, but not the big fluffy pork rinds, more the thin, uber crispy pork rinds that got messed up. <laughs> the ones I hate eating, basically. It is like a thin, uber crunky, crunky, uber crunchy pork rind consistency. But instead of pork, it's just fish. It's 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 just straight up fish. I don't think the squid flavor is doing it for me, unfortunately. Probably gonna have to give that one like a 1.3 out of 10. I'm not gonna straight trash it because it still had some nice crunchiness and like a light. Uh, uh, a light saltiness to it as well, but mostly fish. It, it, it was mostly fish. I'm gonna wash that one down. Glad you remember to save the other half for Maria. Oh, Maria's gonna try that one for sure. I think she hates fishy stuff even more than I do, so she should really hate that one. This one appears to be like a little cookie of some sort with the same... Do I just know... Is this like Animal Crossing or something? Why do I feel like I know what this fruit is? This is a cookie... It is a... Oh, it's a melon. These are, these are melon flavored. That is a green melon, apparently. I'm used to just seeing watermelon. That's just a melon. It is a melon pan. Crunchy and bite-sized, a melon pan cookie is what you need to break the tension during a climactic anime scene. So, okay, I don't know about that so much. That's all I need to know. It's a melon-flavored cookie. I think I will probably enjoy it. If melon tastes like what the... Which honeydew is a kind of melon, so it's surprising I don't like that. If this tastes like those little uh, smarty things... Oh, that's... That's pungent. Oh, that was confusing. I was expecting it to be like a crispy cookie. Like a, like the outside's pretty dense. So I was expecting to bite down and have it be like a crunchy, like a, like a vanilla wafer almost in that way. But it, it's more the consistency of a vanilla wafer that's been left out of the box for a couple of weeks. <laughs> it's less crunchy and more, um, Chewy and powdery, if that makes sense. I like melon, though. I'll tell you what. It's tasty. A little um, light sweetness. I'll give it like a 6.8 out of 10. 
I'll give the little melon cookie like a 6.8 out of 10. Pretty tasty in my personal opinion. I'd eat like a, I'd eat like a box of those for sure. Yo, side quest, welcome in. How's it going? Side quest, help me. Can you read this for me? I need help. Oh, it's cola flavor. It little okay. The one that doesn't have only uh, Japanese characters on it. <laughs> sour cola gummy. Need a sour boost to wake up after a long time anime marathon. Kids and adults in Japan love sour cola gummies. The sour shock and the bottle shape make it a cute, refreshing treat. It says Cora. Oh, I see. Well, it's accurate then. They're they aren't lying. Typically, at least in America, when I think of sour candies, it's usually associated with fruit. I don't know that I have ever seen sour associated with a, certainly not cola, but like any soda. I can't think of any sour variants of any soda. So this seems a little weird. I'm assuming it's just a cola flavored gummy that's dipped in, um, oh, what's that stuff called? What's that sour powder called? Not, 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 something acid. Battery acid? No, not that, it's like a sciencey, uh, it's like a sciencey term. Malic, malic acid. I think that's the, I think that's the, the sour, it's the powder they put on stuff to make it sour. Yep, that's sour. It's got the, it's got malic acid on the outside. We'll give it a go. Hmm. That's such a weird combo. I love cola flavored stuff. Let me, uh, soda flavored stuff in general, like the, uh, the little, what were those, the little bottle caps? I love those. This basically tastes like one of those, but it's covered in sour powder, which seems like it would be a really weird combination because I don't typically think of Coca-Cola or Pepsi if that's your preferred cola brand or RC Cola. I don't think of that as being sour, and nor do I think of that as a flavor I would want to emphasize in the cola, but it's so unexpected paired with the cola flavor that it actually works really well. That's like an 8.4 out of 10. That's actually pretty tasty. I would, I would, I would down a whole pack of those without a doubt. Let's say hi to our brothers up in Canada. I don't know why this is covered in, it's got a Canadian maple leaf, which makes sense because these are maple flavored Kit Kats. I don't know why the giraffes, <laughs> Well, the, the ones at the bottom left have penguins, so maybe there's like a, a different zoo animals series or something like that. Are those turtles? Wait, this guy at the bottom looks like a turtle. Maybe at the top it's a giraffe. I don't know. Just a bunch of different animals on the Kit Kat package. Japan X Canada. You won't be able to stop munching on rich Japan exclusive maple syrup Kit Kats. A. Eh? And we love their eco-friendly outer packaging. Oh, because it's made of paper. I understand. It's a turtle. I was going to say he's got a shell, but then what confused me is his coloring was the exact same as the giraffes up here. Oh, they, they got penguins on the inside. So this whole thing is just, uh, they're just celebrating all the zoo animals from all over the world. Very exciting. Dude, I love penguins. <gasps> I don't normally think of penguins as being associated with Canada, but I could be wrong. I feel like you say penguin backwards to how I say it. How do you say it? There are no living species of penguins that can be found in Canada. Okay. I mean, there's probably not giraffes either. So this whole packaging is very misleading, but that's okay. Did you say penguin? I know I know a lot of people that say penguin. I think that's that's pretty typical over here in the US as well. Little penguin. Penguin. Yeah, I know plenty of people that say penguin. I, oh, dude, these smell awesome. I'm not afraid to admit that I'm probably wrong. These smell unbelievable. I love maple syrup, dude. Uh, for those of you who saw, I finally made my own bread and uh, then I realized I don't really eat that much bread So I turned all of it into French toast and it was tremendous Okay, all right Okay, so here's the thing. I knew I shouldn't have done this 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 right here the maple Kit Kat was essentially the only reason I bought this box is Because I love maple flavored stuff so much and I wanted to try it it is pretty much as I would expect it to be. Unbelievable. It's a 10 out of 10. 10.0 out of 10. Go ahead. I, it breaks the scale. What if you eat something better? I will not eat something better than this. It is unbelievably good. It's a 10.0 out of 10. I'm probably going to eat that whole bag tonight. And now I'm really upset that this thing told me that they are Japan exclusive. Because I'm going to want to eat them. 
all the freaking time. And I am going to go ahead and eat the other one here. Sorry, Maria. We can crack into another one later. I'm going to eat the other half of this one in here. Because I had to eat the squid cracker. That's my reward for eating the squid cracker. Next, we have some sort of anime gummies. This guy in the bottom left, uh, bottom right for you, has kind of scared me a little bit. He's got some horns coming out of his head and he's he's bleeding. I'm assuming this is from an anime that I obviously haven't seen because, well, I don't watch anime. These are that time I got reincarnated as a slime, which I'm assuming is the name of the anime. Kogumi, Kogumi gummies. That time my snack got reincarnated as a slime caught Kogumi gummies. These awesome mini gummies feature four designs of, they're gonna test me, Rimuru Tempest and four flavors. Soda, just, just soda, just soda flavored. Blood Orange, Muscat, which is grape, and Energy Drink. And Energy Drink. Those are, those are the different flavors. Okay, let's see what you got. Oh God, holy. That smells like nail polish. All right, here's our four flavors. Here, here's the four flavors. The four Infinity Stones, Thanos. I'm gonna start with um, with the, the yellow one, which I'm, or the orange one, which I'm assuming is, I can't read Japanese. I'm gonna assume this is soda. Ooh. I don't think that's soda, unless it's orange soda. Oh, that's probably blood orange, I'm a dummy. Yeah, the orange one is probably blood orange. It's delicious. Tremendous. Next, I'll try the light green one, which I'm assuming is grape. AKA Muscat. Tastes exactly like the, um, the little soda I got, which makes sense because it's the exact same flavor. Then we've got a yellow one and a blue one. One of them is soda and one of them is energy drink. I'm gonna assume the yellow is energy drink. Oh, it's pineapple. I don't know any sodas or or energy drinks that are pineapple. I mean, obviously in Japan that, that could be the case, but the yellow one tastes like pineapple. Let's try the blue one that kind of looks like Listerine. I have no idea how to describe that flavor. All I can tell you is my brain, I've got neurons firing off right now that are bringing me back to when I was five years old. I don't know what I ate when I was five years old, but I ate something that tastes exactly like that does. Yeah, I mean, the, these are just like your standard gummies. I tend to not be a big, uh, like gummy bear, gummy worm. I don't, I'm not a big gummy fan in general. It's a little bit too much uh, work in my opinion sometimes. I like the the different, ver like Starbursts are good, Skittles are good. They have like kind of a gummy thing going for them, but are not just like chewing on rubber, if that makes sense. So these probably aren't for me, about 5.7. The flavor's good. Really, if you nail the flavor, that's good enough for me. This is literally just uh, two M&Ms. <laughs> this one literally is just two M&Ms. We'll give this one a try. Chibi Maru Choco. Senpai isn't noticing you? Bruh, me too. Chibi Maru Choco with help, with help to get over the pain. Sweet, cute, and chocolatey. These are the cure for a chocoholic's heartbreak. Here we go. This is just an M&M, I'm pretty sure. Hmm. So here's the thing. It's basically an M&M. But I don't like M&Ms. But these are good. The shell and the chocolate on the inside. First of all, the chocolate's better than an M&M's chocolate. I think M&M uses Hershey chocolate which uses that like pukey chocolate that I don't really like. Um, I'm not a big fan of Hershey's. This tastes like actual milk chocolate. Reminds me of like cracking into like a big Cadbury chocolate bunny or something. And the shell isn't like teeth shatteringly hard like an M&M is. It's more soft and easily crunchable like a Reese's Pieces shell. I'll give that like a, I'll give that a 7.7. .7. That's pretty good. What kind of M&Ms are you eating with titanium shells? All of them, and also have you ever, I don't understand why McDonald's has two McFlurry flavors, Oreo, which is the superior choice, and M&M. M&Ms are the worst ice cream topping of all time because they're already a pain in the butt to chew through, and when you freeze them, they actually become diamonds. Hello Kitty is what we have now. We have this, this good luck cat that you often find in many a Chinese restaurant. What's he here to say? 
to say? I don't know. I hope it's not gum. It is Lucky Cat Candy. Bring a little snack magic to your anime snack fest. This candy changes color as you enjoy it. And the color reflects your fortune. Red is lucky. Yellow is normal. Green is, well, you know. Um, I don't know. And now I'm scared that I'm gonna get green. Okay, so this seems like it's gonna be... This may be one to save for the end. This is definitely a gobstopper. Like, it's a, it's a Willy Wonka's gobstopper that changes colors. There's no way I'm gonna be able to crunch this. To save me from having to... Pardon my French. Suck on this for like the next 30 minutes in front of you guys. We'll save that one to the end with the gum. And we'll try this thing instead. This little, uh... Looks like an ice cream shop, uh, packaging of some sort. It's got marijuana in it, I think. Darjeeling tea cookie. Oh. <laughs> I thought these were like little bits of something. That was a cookie at one point. Is, is what I'm, uh, is what I'm led to infer here. That was a cookie at one point. Now it looks like toppings that are gonna go into a McFlurry. So let's take a look and see what that was supposed to be. We love this tea flavored cookie uh and it looks like it loves us back okay so apparently it was supposed to be a heart it was supposed to be a heart-shaped cookie uh the rich darjeeling flavor will go perfectly with your favorite hot drink and a night in watching anime okay so i will eat the crumbs my experience eating this is certainly going to be ruined a little bit because it is it's in pieces but i will consume the crumbs of this and i will let you know at least how it tastes Oh, big rip. Didn't didn't uh, rip a big enough hole. I'm ripping the whole thing open. We're down to the whole, all the crumbs in one bite. I'll be honest. Maybe it's because it's shattered into small pieces. I don't really taste much tea. It kind of just tastes like a shortbread cookie. Except one that an angry person absolutely smashed against the desk about 300 times i think the form factor that i was uh required to eat it in certainly is going to affect the score a little bit i'm giving it like a 3.6 nothing too exciting it's a very uh it's a very standard very boring flatbread cookie shortbread cookie sorry dude if this is ramen flavored i'm gonna pog off if this is ramen flavored i'm gonna pog off dude i don't know what this guy's saying down there he says okay I'm gonna be very excited though. Texas corn. Uh oh, there's a lot of there's a lot of syllables in this one. Let me let me sound it out. Texas corn okonomiyaki. Forget popcorn. This is your new must-eat light snack for the your favorite anime movie. The sweet savory sauce is based on one of Japan's favorite party foods, okonomiyaki. Unfortunately, that doesn't tell me what that is, so I'm going to look up okonomiyaki it is a japanese savory pancake i think they made one of these in food wars these look amazing by the way yeah that sounds awesome that looks amazing okay this should be good babish did one that's what it was babish did one that's where i've seen it before now i want to make one of those because it looks amazing okay well apparently this is going to taste like it so maybe this will give me a good uh maybe this will give me a good analog for what those pancakes would taste like oh shoot that smells amazing oh that smells like a like a super duper strong barbecue chip they come in these little little puffs these look like the gerber puffs that i was talking about earlier yep that's pretty much what it tastes like these don't taste that potato-y it tastes more like puffed rice than puffed uh potato we had some puffed potato stuff earlier this tastes more like puffed rice to me. It's like a very savory barbecue sauce. Which there is, as you can see here, some sort of... They said it was a savory sauce that gets slathered on the pancake. I'm very into that. Oh, it's... Never mind. It's corn. <laughs> it's not rice. It's corn. It's Texas corn. Yeah, that's tremendous. I like that quite a bit. I'm a, I'm a big fan of corn puffs, and I'm a big fan of barbecue. So combine the two together like a 7.9 out of 10 i think that's pretty good so i have this as well this is a bonus unfortunately so they always include one of these um i think they call them diys yeah you can see on the back they've got instructions so i have to like pour these packets in here and then i have to add water and then i eat them together or something that bunny that bun the pink bunny is looking rather photoshoppable i got a I gotta tell you. 
Um, I'm obviously too lazy to do this, so we'll just give this a 10 out of 10 and assume that it's amazing. Maybe I'll let you guys know later. Um, I don't want to. I don't want to go make it, but it looks pretty good, so I will definitely try it later. It's okay, Banjo. I promise. Which leaves us with two things to try. Number one is the tennis ball gum, which I will crack open and try very quickly. I can't believe how well they have mimicked the look and feel of a tennis ball here. Even down to like they added the texture. They added the texture of a tennis ball to make it look fuzzy. It's not fuzzy. There's no fuzz on this. Okay, it's gum. I'm gonna try the gum. I don't know what flavor it is. I'll, I'll tell you in a second. Oh, it's sour. Bounce it. It's sour. The only thing they didn't nail. Oh my God, it's sour. Ace gum. Maybe Prince of Tennis is more your speed. We've got the gum for you. This Japanese tennis ball shaped gum starts sour with lemon, but gradually gets sweeter. Oh my gosh. I should have read that first to like know what to expect. It's good though. I love sour gum. I love sour stuff. <coughs> it's not getting sweeter. I gotta, I gotta let you know. It's staying pretty consistently sour. It's a weird chewing gum consistency though. It's not like, uh, I mean, typically these like flavored gums aren't meant to be chewed for super long periods of time. You can like chew them till the flavor goes and then spit them out, which I gotta be honest, when they say it's getting sweeter, I think that's some uh, clever uh, marketing messaging to say the flavor runs out because it's pretty much already gone, <laughs> but it was good. It doesn't last longer than Fruit Stripe. It does. Nothing lasts quite as short as Fruit Stripe, which is a shame because for those like 17 seconds that you're chewing it, it's some of the best fruit flavor you'll ever experience. And then it's gone. I used to love that stuff. And then um, what was the other gum? Is it called like Yauch, I think? It came in like Band-Aid container. It had like three flavors, like watermelon, grape, and orange or something in a Band-Aid container. Mmm, chef's kiss. This gum is like stuck in between my teeth. All right, I'm going to, uh, one second. I'm going to, we got one more thing to try. So I'm gonna spit this out. And I figured no one wants to see that. And if you do want to see that, hit me up in the DMs and we can uh, work out like a, a just sneezing situation, perhaps. Okay, here's the last one. It's the lucky cat ball that changes colors. Uh, Yeti, you may get your spit anyway, because I'm gonna have to pull this out of my mouth to see what color it turns. Okay, so it's a gobstopper. So I'm gonna have to suck on this for a while. Red is good luck, yellow is normal luck, green is, well, you know, I'm assuming bad luck. Are you kidding me? If that's green, I'm ending the stream. I think it might be green. This looks like, a, right now it's like half purple, half green. So it's like one of those grapes that can't decide what flavor it wants to be. We'll keep going on this, but if it's green, I mean, I already knew, but I didn't need my candy to confirm that I have horrible luck. One sec. Brothers, ladies and gentlemen, we have a green center, which means I have a bad luck, which means I'm not getting clean, but that's okay. This was awesome, by the way. Uh, thank you to Tokyo Treat for not sponsoring, but allowing me to purchase <laughs> one of these delicious boxes. I would say highly worth uh, the money that I spent on it. Does that mean I'm gonna get more in the future? Maybe. All I can say is that for the 50-ish dollars that I spent on this, it was Tremendous. Lots of good variety. Most of the snacks were absolute bangers. There were a couple that I was a little iffy on. Mostly, well, the cookie that was smashed into a million pieces was not my favorite. The baby cocky, just for the name, was a little iffy. Dude, Uncle Pierre's butter cream roll was so good. These dragon potato chili flavor is amazing. Uh, the squid cookie we could leave, I think, out of the next month's box. 